Hello everyone and welcome back to Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews. Well, here we are in the second month of 2022 and I'm finally ready to share my top 10 scientific model releases of 2021. Man, I hope I'm this on top of things for the rest of the year. Anyway, I've already tackled my top 5 pop culture and Mattel offerings of the past year, so now that my PNSO Triceratops and Iguanodon have arrived, it's time to get a little more scientific up in here. And if you all thought 2020 was a good year for dinosaur model collecting, turns out you hadn't seen anything yet. As a quick recap for scientific models released in the year of 2021, Safari LTD showcased an admittedly limited run of three true dinosaur figures, but it was definitely quality over quantity with their lineup last year. Meanwhile, newcomers like GR Toys pushed out another two noteworthy dinosaur offerings, and Dino Hazard hit the scene with their first figure, despite some controversy. Old favorites like Eofauna also contributed with two versions of a unique Triceratops model, and speaking of Ceratops, Opsians. We got not one, but two more waves of the incredible Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series. And of course, PNSO sure pulled their weight, producing a staggering 22 figures throughout the year. If I'm being honest, I think we are seeing a distinctive shift in the market here. I hear a lot of people belly aching over the saturation of unofficial Jurassic-inspired products. And whereas I would certainly say that was a fair complaint at one point, it seems the pendulum has swung back and now it has never been a better time to be a scientific model collector. I have had a hard time scraping up enough pop culture inspired models to create a best of list from, but here, it seems like there's almost too many great offerings to pick from. So again, I think I'm going to have to break this list into two separate parts. One focusing on models from the likes of Safari, KNSO, and Eofauna, among others, and then one for my top five picks from the Beasts of the Mesozoic action figures. And I know those should definitely qualify as scientific products, but to me, they just exist in a league of their own. The mix of artistry, accuracy, and posability really makes them their own distinct thing. Not mere models or action figures, but something entirely unique to the world of dinosaur collecting, and for that, I think they deserve their own separate countdown. Plus, my adult Triceratops is still in shipping limbo, and I'm tired of waiting to do this countdown, so today, I'll just be focusing on the model end of things, and once that trike shows up, I'll do a best of Beasts of the Mesozoic countdown and overall top 10 of 2021. I might also try to do an overall ranking of the entire Ceratopsian series, since that line has concluded for the time being. For now, though, let's get into the top 10 scientific models of 2021. As always, I'm going to start with some honorable mentions. There's actually a fair number of these given the sheer number of figures produced in the past year. And even if there isn't room for all of them on the list, I feel there are some that I at least have to acknowledge. First up, I want to give a nod to PNSO's Dunkelosteus Zaha. I think it's an objectively well done figure, and the jaw articulation is just some top notch engineering on PNSO's part. But you all know me, I like to focus on the dinosaurs with these lists, at least when I can. And speaking of dinosaurs, I'll also give a mention to their U Tyrannus Yichi and Carnotaurus Domingo, although that last one may be due to personal bias. I quite like both these models, Ichi because it was great to finally see PNSO tackling basic feathers with their sculpts, and Domingo because, well, it's a Carnotaurus and a fun one at that. As a couple of other honorable mentions, I want to give Collecta the spotlight for the moment and mention their impressive Mementisaurus, massive Pteranodon, and charming Kamuisaurus. I rarely go for Collecta figures, but these three sure were sorely tempting this past year, and if there wasn't already so much amazing stuff to get, I probably would have pulled the trigger on them. Even if I didn't, if they were good enough to at least pique my interest, I think they deserve to be at least mentioned here. Now, on to the list. Kicking things off at number 10, we have the Safari LTD Baryonyx. Even with only three figures, Safari managed to steal a spot or two on this list. This is far and away the best scientific Baryonyx model currently available. I love the subtle sculpt work and the warm tones of the color scheme are quite appealing. The only drawback would be the somewhat quote unquote brittle nature of these newer figures, but luckily for me, I haven't had any issues just yet. Number 9 is a bit of a weird situation. It's a three-way tie. Well, sort of. I'm gonna talk through it here now 
in the video. But when narrowing down this list, I was having the hardest time choosing between PNSO's Stegosaurus duo, Bieber and Rook, Iguanodon Harvey, and Triceratops Doyle. I do like each of these offerings from the company for the same reason I like all of their pieces. The sculpts are top notch and the paint schemes, though not as rich as the paint masters promise, are still quite good for a mass produced model. Here's the problem with each, however. They're all museum line figures, and you know what that means. A substantial price hike with little extra incentive, and in the case of the Iguanodon and Trike, a bunch of fluff in the form of pamphlets and posters that no one asked for. At one point, the museum line actually meant something. It meant a bigger species complete with an actual sculpted display base. Now, bases are long gone. There isn't a notable difference in size for the most part and the quality doesn't seem any better or worse than the cheaper prehistoric animal line. As a result, it just feels like the museum line is just PNSO's way to get away with charging more for big seller dinosaurs like T-Rex and Triceratops, which does feel a little bit dirty. To be fair, I'm sure there's more to it than that. Everything's just getting more expensive these days, so it's hard to say PNSO is just getting greedy and or lazy, but when the price is $20 to $30 more than the standard line with little else going for it, it does hurt the appeal of the figure and make the respective issues of each all the more glaring. All of these are gorgeous models, but none of them are without their faults. For Bieber, it's the size and muddy paint job. For Harvey, it's the glaring faults with accuracy, something you wouldn't expect to see from, you know, a museum line figure. Then of course, Doyle's got that weird lower jaw articulation thing going for him. I'd be a little more forgiving of these issues on a 30 or maybe even $40 figure, but for $60, I expected a little more. With that in mind, if I had to pick one to earn the the coveted number nine spot on this list, it would come down to cost and which one I felt was most worth the higher price tag. That being said, Doyle earns the ninth spot on this list for his hefty size and the included skull, which is really the first thing I've seen in recent memory that feels like a worthy addition to the quote unquote museum line. That and the mix of scientific accuracy with the old world Charles R. Knight charm gives it a distinctive edge over the competition. Of course, if price was no object, you could probably interchange any of these three for the number nine spot, and I wouldn't disagree. As for the other two, just stick them in the honorable mentions. Coming in at number eight, just above Doyle, we have the Eofauna Triceratops duo. I don't know that Eofauna has missed yet, and these two trikes were certainly welcome additions to their growing catalog. Only Eofauna could take a species as overdone as Triceratops and still make it feel one of a kind. What makes them so cool to me, beyond the highly detailed sculpt based on a very unique specimen, is that they can be displayed together as sparring partners. Eofauna really had their third eye open with this. I mean, we've seen plenty of other companies doing repaints of the same mold to pad out their lineups, but I can't think of a single other example where the pose was selected with such specific intention as to allow collectors to play them off of one another in such a dynamic way, making them perfect for dioramas and or toy photography. It really was a stroke of genius on Eofana's part, as it let them get the most bang for their buck out of their great mold, while also giving collectors a very specific reason to get both, and for less than the cost of one PNSO Triceratops at that. The one negative I have with the figures would be their paint jobs. They're far from my favorite, but they're certainly not bad enough to ruin the rest of the figures figure for me. The number seven spot goes to the GR Toys Dicreosaurus. This was certainly a pleasant surprise from the growing company. I don't know that I could name another Dicreosaurus figure on the market, let alone one this nice. But alas, even with its obscurity, I still feel like this figure came and went with little fanfare. And that's a darn shame because it is quite nice, especially when paired with that amazing base. The only drawback, the paint is certainly a marked step down from their ambitious Carcharodontosaurus, and to make matters worse, it's incredibly delicate. I can't touch this figure without the paint rubbing away or scuffing, and that's super annoying, especially for anyone hoping to use it in toy photography. Still, if you're just getting it to look at a pretty Dicreosaurus figure, you won't be disappointed. Just be sure you spring the extra 12 or $15 for that base, because it really does take the piece up a notch. 
Coming in at number 6 we have the Safari LTD Despletosaurus. This is a great little figure with oodles of that Doug Watson charm we've come to know and love from the company. I really love its kingly pose and the paint job, though simplistic, just taps into that classic dinosaur color scheme of green and yellow. Getting into the top 5 we have the GR Toys Carcharodontosaurus. Talk about a good year for Carcharodontosaurus. On top of PNSO's great offering, we also got two incredibly painted offerings from GR Toys. This was another hard choice for me between the two figures. I think I preferred the extremely fine sculpt that PNSO gave us, but at the end of the day, the size and staggering levels of paint on the GR Toys version were just impossible to ignore. True, it's not my favorite color scheme, in fact I'd be hard pressed to call it a color scheme at all. It has all the rhyme and reason of a child's finger painting in some areas, but the amount of color and layers of paint and application techniques really is commendable. And on some areas, it does work very well. I don't know that we've seen anything this intricately painted at this price point before, so GR Toys really set a curve with this figure. At number 4 we have a newcomer to the world of dinosaur models, it's the Dino Hazard Irritator. Even if its release came with some heavy controversy, the beauty of the final product can't be ignored. The incredible scale and skin detail paired with the eye-catching yet understated color scheme and a great base make this figure a real standout. That and the included lungfish prey accessory really lets you create an amazing scene for your display. The only drawbacks I would point out would be the shoddy balance and very notable seams. Luckily for me, mine stands pretty well with the help of its lungfish and these seams disappear when you're admiring it at a distance. Which, trust me, I do a lot. And the number 3 spot goes to Ivan, the Allura Titan from PNSO. PNSO had made three amazing hadrosaurs prior to this figure's release, and this really shows them taking their formula in exciting new directions. Not only does it have the same great sculpt as the previous three offerings, but the rearing posture and gracile curvature to the spine are a real showstopper. That and the color scheme is one of their best to date in my opinion. And the runner-up for best scientific model of 2021, this is probably going to be heckin' divisive actually, but it's the PNSO Tarbosaurus Schwanzi. I know opinions on this figure are fairly mixed, you either love it or you hate it. For me, it's one of their best so far. I absolutely love the confident striding posture, and the sculpt work is so intricate and detailed. All of that is then accentuated by a simple yet effective color scheme, making this my absolute favorite Tyrannosaur from them yet. Wonky proportions and all. And the number one scientific model release of 2021 goes to... PNSO's Wyatt the Parasaurolophus. This marked a distinctive shift for the company. It was their first release after a brief hiatus, and after this, over-textured sculpts were out, crisp, subtle, scale, and skin work were in. We'd seen glimmers of this greatness before on their 2020 hadrosaurs, but this was a perfection of the form in my opinion. Not only that, but it boasts one of the closest paint jobs to the paint master that we've ever got from PNSO. I was giddy when I first opened it, and it's only grown on me since. Not only is it my favorite Parasaurolophus figure on the market, but it's definitely among my favorite releases from PNSO ever. And given the sheer amount of competition there is, that's quite an achievement. And there you have it everyone, my top 10 scientific models of 2021. It's about time, but man was this a hard list to narrow down. I think it's safe to say that PNSO dominated once again, but there were plenty of worthy challengers coming from new and old companies alike. I'm very excited for what's in store from all of these brands this year, and it seems we're already off to a promising start. PNSO dropped their Centrosaurus and Styracosaurus models recently, and just revealed their Zhuchang Tyrannus. Safari has revealed the first of their lineup, a Pataga Titan. Eofauna has a massive Diplodocus on the way. GR Toys is doing a fun competition tie-in with their upcoming Quetzalcoatlus. And newer companies like Dino Hazard and Ancestors have a promising looking Carcharodontosaurus and Edmontosaurus on the way respectively. So be sure to stick around for everything coming down the line as well as my last countdown video. In the meantime, if you'd like an in-depth review of any of these models, be sure to check the links in the description 
description below. And before you go, don't forget to drop a comment letting me know your favorite scientific releases from the year of 2021. Do you agree with my picks or am I way off? And what is it you're most looking forward to in the coming months? For now though, take care out there and goodbye.